Hello and welcome to another tutorial video of KeyStage. So in this tutorial I will talk about the live console, the details of the live console. So if you remember, uh, this is when we press this live performance button, we can access to the live console where you usually use it during your live performance. And on the live console, each section can be assigned one of these five units. There's Info unit, XY control unit, lyrics, media, and piano unit. So I'm going to talk about each of these units in detail. But before I do that, I'm going to talk about a couple of new features. So first thing that you realize is that these sections now have colors. So each section can be assigned a different color from here, very similar to assigning colors to, your, to the tracks here. And when you go to the live console, this top bar uh, also represents the color of the corresponding section. And also you can see this global panel button here. That's a new button you know, on 1.3. And if you tap this button, now you will have a global view of your song, which each section in its own color. And you can also see the layout of your parts in each section. And you can basically switch between sections by just tapping on them. Now there is this horizontal division and vertical division. Uh, this basically changes how many sections are divided vertically and horizontally. Okay, so let me start a new song to actually in, uh, go to the details of each part. So if I create a couple of more parts. So the first one is the info unit. I can see the structure of whole parts and I can manually change these here. I can change the volume. So these are the most commonly used parameters for each part. And one thing that I should mention is this lock button. When this lock is on, this cannot be adjusted. The, these, are, these are just locked. Uh, this is especially useful during live performances where you don't accidentally change the ranges of your parts. You cannot change the notes here. But you can adjust the volume. You can change the volumes during li live performance, but they are not stored when lock is on. So for example, if I activate section one in here, they just return to their default values. So whatever you m changes you make during the volumes are not recorded, are not stored in the section. They just change temporarily. But if the lock is off, these are actually stored in the, in the section. And when the lock is on, you cannot change the pitches as well. Well, this massive volume multiplier, I, I want to focus on that massive volume multiplier for a bit. So, so it ranges from zero to two. This really is a multiplier of all the volumes of all parts in the whole song. So, for example, if I look at here, the volume is 48, for 47 on the second part. And if one massive volume multiplier is one, uh, this, part is sends volume 47 uh, to the appropriate synthesizer. But if I increase the massive volume multiplier, each of these values are multiplied up to, up to two. It, it can be actually doubled. Of course, it cannot go beyond 127. And if I just take it all the way down to zero, all the volumes just are, are muted. So you can globally uh, fade out all the all the parts and all the tracks by using this slider. Uh, one other place where you can access that slider is the song properties button. So when you actually tap the on the name of the song, you will have another control panel uh, here. Uh, I'm going to talk about this control panel in, in another tutorial video in details about when I talk about custom translators. But you can see the master volume multiplier here. So these are stored for each song and can be adjusted with the live control surface. So there's one additional feature of 1.3, and it's that if, if you're using your iPad in portrait mode, and because of the layout of the portrait mode, you cannot fit in all the ranges and volumes and pitches. But now you have the, you have the option to switch between either to show the ranges of each part or volumes and pitch shifts. So these are also stored globally. So, and also, you can either show notes here or the master volume controller. So the next info unit, X5 control unit, there isn't much else to te tell about it. I already covered this unit in the tutorial video, in the first basic tutorial video. Uh, 
the next unit is the lyrics unit, which is also kind of self-explanatory. You just put your lyrics here. You can add your lyrics and edit your lyrics here, or you can also access them from here, from the sections uh, control panel. Now, I want to talk about this media unit because I haven't actually talked about it before. So key stage can view PDF and GPX files, uh, but before you, you're able to access them, you have to upload PDF files. So let me actually run a PDF viewer here. So I have two nodes here. One of them is a GPX file and one of them is a PDF file. I have two scores. So let's actually first upload the GPX file. So you simply open it in key stage, copy to key stage. So upload a media document. And if you go to the files and media folder here, now you have this third or fifth score. You can just view it by double tapping it. So all your media files are stored in this folder. And you cannot actually move them out or you cannot put in any other thing in, in inside that folder. They are ju it's just reserved for, for your media files, for your GPEG and PDF files. Yeah, let's also upload the PDF document. Uh, I'm just going to send a flattened copy of it. It doesn't matter, actually. So, so I have these two documents here. And now, if I look at the control panel of this section, there is this media file part here. And I can see two of these media files here, which can also be accessed here. So, for example, I can, you know, use standard gestures like zoom or scroll. And I, I for example, I, this is my first section. I want to show this part of the score in this section. And let me create another section. Let's also go to the media panel. And on this section, I want to show the remaining part of this first page here. And these are automatically scored. Well, let me also zoom out a bit. So these positions are stored in each section. So whenever I switch between two sections, the pages automatically just changes. And on for, for the third section, let's actually choose my PD GPX file. So I can do also do zoom and scroll here. And this time, on the third section, another another media file is viewed here. So you can assign different PDFs or different parts of PDFs and GPX to different sections. Um, by changing sections, you can just go through the whole score. Also, you can change the pages of these uh, PDF and GPX files using custom translators, but I'm going to talk about it in another tutorial video. Okay, so the last unit is this piano unit. And in order to be able to work with this piano unit, you actually need to go into the translators so suppose I'm on section 3 and the piano unit is activated on the section 3. I have my part connected to my Jordan Tron. And on the translator section, there is this live control units. So as you remember, this X and Y control are used to, uh, to be able to connect your part to the XY control unit. And it's very similarly, this virtual piano, when you activate this virtual piano unit, now this starts to control that part. You can actually connect multiple parts to these units and control multiple synths at the same time with your with your virtual piano. So we have the pitch band here. We can change the octave. And also the position of your keyboard s is stored in the in the section. So if I create a fourth section and also activate the piano unit here. So you see that the in these two sections, the positions of your p of, of your keyboard is, is different. They are stored. You can instantly change the octave without using this slider here. And when this is locked, it's the same with the volume button. The you can change the octave or change the position of your keyboard or change the octave, but they are not stored. So the initial position, the original position is stored in the, in the section. There is one addition, one more button that I want to talk about. Uh, in this virtual piano, there is this switch, which filters notes that is coming from 
from the track itself. So my keyboard is connected. And on this part, for example, I want to use my virtual piano to control this track. But I want to use my actual piano to control other tracks. And I don't want my keyboard to send any MIDI messages to this track. So now this, this becomes off and only the virtual piano controls this part. And I can choose to control other synthesizers with, with my keyboard. So that al allows me to do a kind of a split with me between my actual keyboard and the virtual keyboard. So I guess that's all for, for the co live control units and thanks for watching.